I'm giving you a tip. Remember this, okay? Remember this because another question might be about this law. I would like to go with the lifeline. Okay, I'll give you four options. Just listen through to the four options. No, no. Let me listen. Let me complete no, no. the. Wait, wait, wait. Let me complete the options. Welcome, uh, Gautam. Uh, before we get on to the show. Have you ever been interested in all these laws of the games? Have you ever been intrigued or interested by the, uh, you know, the complex nature of the laws of the game? I see that you have a pen. You seem to be taking it very uh, seriously. So, have you ever been interested in all this? I'm not really like you know. I just love to play the game. Not uh, very interested in the laws of the game and stuff. What is the weirdest mm-hmm. thing that has confused you? That has baffled you? Something to do with the laws of the game? Uh, I think uh, the, this World Cup, like you know, 2019 World Cup when the England in England won, it was a little bit of like you know confusion where after the game everyone started talking about like you know you should have called it a dead ball and like it was quite confusing like, uh, but nevertheless like you know whatever rules we have uh, like you know played through says it's a boundary so I guess there is something which actually confused it like you know there was a lot of talk about it. So it went on for a long time. In fact, uh, quite a lot of people uh, opposed it, and quite a lot of people were pros and cons are always there in a debate. So, yeah, that that uh, that was actually a little bit of confusion happened. Okay, all right. So, so as you said, the World Cup final is one prime example of uh, the confusing nature of laws. I mean, even for umpires sometimes. So, right. So, so this quiz will be about that. Don't worry, we'll have some fun. Let's see how much you can get. Ready, uh, ready to get started? Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay. So the first question, first of four easy questions. I hope they are easy. First question is, I'll give you just two options for this. It's a very straightforward one. You're an off spinner yourself. Is a bowler allowed to bowl without a run up? Like just stand there and bowl. Is that allowed? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, that is right. So that's that's a single. So the second question. Now you're also a batsman. You're an all-rounder. So let's see if you can get this right. Uh, a team needs one run to win. Mm-hmm. A batsman is on 98. He hits mm-hmm. the ball and runs two runs. Mm-hmm. His century. He wants the century, so he runs two runs. Mm-hmm. How much will his score be at the end of the game? Should I repeat the question? Batting, how much? 90. 98 the team needs one run to win he hits the ball and runs two so i'll give you two options again it is is it 99 or is it 100 100 are you sure like uh, the no he it's a two runs he runs yeah. two he runs two the team needs one run to win but he runs two he's on 98 he runs two Like one run, yeah. Like uh, one run is about the victory. Uh, you're puzzling me now. <laughs> This is supposed to be an easy one. It's it's ninety nine. He can't like you know because the match is already over. Okay, indeed that is the right one. Ninety nine, ninety nine is right. The match match ends when he finishes the single. So whatever happens after that is not taken into consideration. So you've got two out of two right. It's a good start. It's a good start. I hope you're not finding this too confusing already. We've still got some more time to go. <laughs> All right then. Third question. Again, a bowling question. For which of the following dismissals does the bowler get credit? Okay. Does the bowler get the wicket? Basically, option A, run out. Option B, hit wicket. Option C, hit the ball twice. Or option D, obstructing the field. You want me to repeat the option? Okay. Hit wicket. Okay, that's right. Again, hit wicket. It's pretty straightforward. You got that one pretty easily. So congrats. You still got three out of three. Well done. Well done. Okay. Fourth question. Fourth question mm-hmm. is the last one in the easy section. Again, just two options mm-hmm. for this. Mm-hmm. The batsman in the middle run three runs. However, mm-hmm. both of them ran short in the second run. Mm-hmm. Basically, they don't reach the crease. Both of them do not reach their respective creases. How many mm. runs are awarded? One run mm. or two runs? Two runs. Two runs is indeed right. So 
the rule is that if both batsmen run short in one and the same run it shall be regarded as only one short run so you say you're not interested in this but you still got four out of four it's a boundary to start well done as you told like, you know, it's a pretty uh, decent ones like you know pretty easy one so let's see the mid, uh, little medium ones now okay okay you're ready to go for the medium ones i'm ready as well so let's go fifth question in which of the following dismissals will the batsman be dismissed even in case of a no ball okay i'll give you four options just listen through to the four options one out let me listen let me complete the Wait, wait, wait. Let me complete the options. <laughs> option A, run out. That is pretty obvious, I'm guessing. Option B, hit the ball twice. Option C, obstructing the field. Option D, all of the above. Run out. Is it only run out or do you want to check out the other options option as well? A, option B is obstructing. Yes, that is also true. Option C, what did you say? option c is obstructing option b is hit the ball twice option d is all of the above yeah because everything is uh, awarded not to the bowler and uh, everything is like you know one is obstructing the field even if you're bowled a no ball that is like you know the uh, the batsman can be given out and uh, one is uh, run out that's very obvious and uh, uh, the b one what did he say uh, it was the hit twice. the ball twice yeah Okay, so you're going with all of the above. All right, that is also right. So you can be out in all of the above mentioned ways of dismissals, as you said. So five out of five. That's a great start. Keep going. Let's see how how much. And you've got three lifelines in the bank as well. You've not used that yet. Okay, sixth question. Sixth question might be a little tricky. Let's see. A batsman is out, hit wicket, and caught at the same time. how is his dismissal recorded option a hit wicket option b caught option c both hit wicket and caught three options hit wicket why do you think it's hit wicket because the uh, like whenever uh, the wicket is uh, disturbed i guess that is what is considered as the first uh, priority of uh, wicket Okay, so are you sure about this? Shall we lock this, or do you want to reconsider? No, let's go for it. Okay, you lock this answer. I'm afraid to say that is wrong. The option, okay. the correct, the correct answer is caught. So okay. the law says that caught will take precedence, mm. even if it is not a bold. Basically, bold will take precedence first, and after bold, it is caught. So whatever dismissals follow, bold or caught. it will be Does either it? the bold or caught so basically caught okay. takes precedence about caught. hit wicket so okay. Okay. i'm i'm giving you a tip remember this okay remember this because another question might be about this law okay, okay. let's okay. ready ready for the seventh one yeah you got 5 out of 6 that's still a great score yeah okay a batsman defends the ball to the pitch instinctively he just picks up the ball and passes it to the fielder and the fielding team suddenly appeals what does the umpire do he option a he calls it not out and warns the fielding team for needless appealing okay option b he gives the batsman out for obstruction option okay. c he gives the batsman out hit the ball twice he defends and ball is he tells the uh, uh, fielding team i would like to go with the lifeline okay so the lifeline i will i'll give it options a and b so basically is he not out or is he out for obstruction uh not out i sure yeah what what why do i mean you you are a batch when you pick up the ball ball so that means he is not uh, trying to take a single or whatever 
okay. and he's just passed the ball uh, fielding side uh, as he's defended the ball and the ball is already dead. That's what, like you know, that's what I feel. Okay, the ball is actually in play. Ball is in play when he's defends the ball. Do you want to reconsider uh, your answer now? Not dead. That means like you know, he he can be given out because he's handling the ball. Okay, okay, that is right. So. The option B given out for obstruction is indeed right. Handling the ball comes under obstruction. So I'll take it as you've given uh, you you have said given out obstruction obstructing the field. So I'll give it to you. So basically the ball is in play, even if he's the ball defend- is, the ball, like you know, you can't handle the ball. You can just exactly. kick the ball maybe. Exactly. The ball. Exactly. Without the consent of the fielding team. That is the that is the rule. So even if you are like harmlessly just picking up the ball and giving it to a fielder without the consent of the fielder or the fielding team you cannot do that so this actually happened in an under 19 world cup match in uh, 2018 uh, between south africa and west indies if i remember right south african opener he had actually just defended the ball he picked it up and mm-hmm. gave it to the keeper the keeper was the west indies team captain and he appealed okay. he gave him out so it caused a huge uh, controversy back then about how can kids do all mm-hmm. these kind of things. So, but anyway, that is the rule. So he followed the rule. That's pretty much about it. Right. So, so well done. You've completed the medium section. You've got six out of seven, and you have used one lifeline. If I'm, if I'm right, you've got two more Sorry. left. Now we're getting into the tough section. Okay. 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 Ready. A tailender hits the ball to the deep and attempts to run three runs. Hmm. While nearly completing the third run, the fielder deliberately throws the ball to the boundary, hoping to keep the tail tail ender on strike for the next ball. Hmm. How many runs are awarded? Option A is four runs, four runs for the boundary. Hmm. Option B is six runs. That is, they have completed two runs plus the boundary, four runs for the boundary. Option C is seven runs. That is, they have completed two runs. And they are running the third run plus the boundary. So two plus one plus four. Is it four, six, or seven? So it's a boundary. Is it just four? Yeah. He's not overthrown it. He's just kicked the ball to the boundary. Yeah, he's deliberately thrown it away to the boundary. Yeah, like ball is going and he's just pushed it out with that uh, thing only, right? In yeah, the same not- direction. In the same direction, but he has done it deliberately. He has not like uh, missed the inter door. It's a boundary. It's a boundary. Are you yeah. sure or do you want to use a lifeline? No, I'll go with it. Okay, then I will lock the answer. It is not a boundary, unfortunately. The answer is option C, seven runs. Okay. Okay, so because basically... See- what I was asking was like, because if the ball is travelling in one direction and say uh, he wants to keep the batsman in the same thing. Okay. So he kicks the ball and it goes to the boundary is what I like you know assumed it. Mm. Maybe he picked it up and he threw it is what the yeah. that uh, supported for. Yeah. So 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 basically the uh, rule is that deliberately, even if whether you kick it or whether you throw it. Deliberately, mm. if the fielder does it, if the fielder does it deliberately, then he will be the bat- batting team will be awarded the boundary plus the runs and that have completed plus the run in progress if the batsmen have crossed. So, okay. so in this case, it is two runs plus one run plus four. That's the whole thing about the rules. We just play like you know complete rules about the game. <laughs> I, I know, I know. This is, it's it's complex. It's complex. Actually. This rule was actually invoked in one of those Ben Stokes uh, incidents in the World Cup final. So basically, when he threw, uh, uh, when it hit the bat and it went off to the boundary in the 49th over or the penultimate over of the game. Yeah. So this rule came into picture because whether it is an overthrow or if it is a deliberate act deliberate. by a fielder, mm. this mm. rule will come into picture. So. Okay. Okay, so two more questions. You've got two lifelines, so you can just use off those two lifelines for the upcoming questions if you wish, if you wish. So, ninth question, tough mm-hmm. section. Mm-hmm. A striker hits the ball straight. It touches the bowler's finger on the full and then hits the stump mm-hmm. and then it directly mm-hmm. bounces to the mid-wicket fielder. It does not hit the ground anywhere. So, basically, it goes straight to the 
bowler's finger and then from the bowler's finger to the stump and then to the uh, mid wicket fielder the catch is that the non striker was out of his crease when the ball hits the stumps hmm when the ball hits the stumps the non striker is out of his crease now what happens hmm. option a the non striker is given out run out option b the striker is out caught option c both batsmen are given out non striker is given out again do you want to use a lifeline you got two you might as well use two i'm just offering you the lifeline if you want <laughs> like repeat the question the batsman is hit the ball and the uh, and the bowler's hand it's touched the bowler's hand and hits the wicket yeah and the non striker is out of the crease yes and then it goes then to the fielder fielder catches the ball so this is the scenario run out Are you sure? Last time I'm offering you a lifeline. You don't want the lifeline. Okay. You got. That's fine. All right then. Even if uh, I, can, I can learn uh, new things, that's fine. Okay, great, great attitude then. So the uh, run out is wrong. Run okay. out is wrong. The answer is striker is out caught. So I told okay. you earlier that the caught will take precedence. Remember, I told you about. caught and bowled so basically if a if a batsman is out caught whatever other modes of dismissals are there in that delivery except for mm. bowled he will be given out mm. caught so that okay. is the law okay. okay okay great then so tenth question last question last question is also a bit tricky but uh, let's mm. see if you can crack it the striker hits the ball in the air Hmm. The ball goes towards mid on. The mid on fielder tries to catch the ball, but just when he is coming under the ball, the non striker shouts and distracts him. Hmm. The fielder drops the catch. Okay, do you get the scenario? Basically, the ball yeah. is hit in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So non striker is distracting him. That's it. So and the and the catch is dropped. Now what happened? Hmm. Option hmm. A. the striker is out for obstruction hmm option b the non striker is out for obstruction hmm option c both batsmen are not out again you can use a lifeline do you want me to repeat option the option c no option c because they are not obstructing uh, by by going in between or handling whatever shouting like you know when there is so much crowd shouting behind and whatever whatever i guess that's much easier okay anyways i have my uh, lifeline so i would go with one of the lifelines okay so lifeline the answer you said that is option c both batsmen are not out is wrong mm-hmm. so either the striker is out for obstruction or the non striker is out for obstruction so these are the two options that are left So one of the batsmen is out for obstruction. Who is it? Striker or non-striker? I would go with striker. That is indeed right. Striker is out. That is uh, that's actually a very uh, very good answer because a lot of them would think that the non-striker is out for obstruction because it was him who uh, did the obstruction part of it or him who distracted. Hit the ball. I think the striker was the person who hit the ball and. because his teammate did it and maybe that that this is one of the reasons that is the reason in fact that is indeed the reason so that's a solid answer uh well done so we have come to the end of uh, the quiz very well done on this i'm i'm guessing you got 7 right i, 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 I yeah 7 so that's a good score that's a good score for someone who said that you're not too uh, deep, uh you're not too involved in all these uh, laws of the game and all that you have actually done very well 7 out of 10 and as you said you've shown great attitude to learn things also so well done and uh, thank you so just before i let you go uh if you could change one law about cricket one law of cricket what would it be uh i think uh, as a bowler like you know as a spinner see uh, a fast bowler has a bounce 
two bouncers in a 50 over game and a bouncer in a t20 game and uh, in a day's game he can bowl two bouncers i guess there should be something for the spinners as well where he can bowl a little down the leg he can be given a little bit of uh, uh, leverage uh, so much of a place where he, if he can bowl a little like you know wider down the leg not considering that like you know uh, as a batsman is charging and if is given out also like you know it's it's a considered as a wide like uh, that shouldn't be a thing that's what i feel like you know as a spinner i i would always back my spinning thing so maybe when you bowl down the leg i guess you shouldn't be given a wide but at least a ball in a over correct right, that's a very interesting suggestion also because as we see we are i mean bowlers are uh, getting hit all over the park these days especially in t20s and all that game is heading right. towards batsmen so Let's see. This could probably be something that uh, the authorities could consider. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us on this show. Thank you. Uh, you you've been a, you've been a great sport. Uh, do you want to challenge anybody? Or- uh, you can uh, try uh, and get uh, Karun Nair. Okay. Karun Nair. Or Manish Pandey. Abhimanyu Mital. Okay. I guess Abhimanyu Mital would be a good option. Let's okay. go with Abhimanyu. I would challenge Abhimanyu Mital. I guess, like you know, he he's he's thorough with all the uh, ongoings. So okay. uh, he have a, a fair bit of idea. I feel like you know he's he's pretty good in uh, like knowing about the game in and out. So I guess I would uh, I would want to see like you know how much how much of a thing he has. <laughs> all right, let me see. Let me try and get hold of Abhimanyu Mitra, and then I will update you about how much he gets. Thanks a lot, Gautam, uh, for your time.